Treatment of a ketone or aldehyde with chlorine, often together with acid, places the chlorine at the alpha carbon. HCl is a byproduct. Just as a quick reminder, in common nomenclature, the carbon next to the carbonyl is called alpha. So those are alpha positions. And they're equivalent here. The chlorine could end up on either carbon, making the same product. Acid acts as a catalyst. And because acid is made as a byproduct, you increase the concentration of catalyst as the reaction proceeds. This is a type of process called autocatalytic. The chemistry is a little more interesting when the two alpha carbons are different from each other. And we can imagine a preference for either the more substituted or less substituted position. The chemical facts are there's a preference for the more substituted position. This is the major product and the minor product. The difference in yields in these two products is enough to be synthetically significant. To explain this, we need to look at the mechanism. Recall that proton acids readily protonate the carbonyl oxygen. That's a reversible process. Rapid equilibrium puts a positive charge on oxygen. But in a second resonance structure, we see the positive charge also can be on carbon. I put these two resonance structures in brackets. We can picture the formation of enol from this by loss of an alpha hydrogen at either of the two alpha positions, or loss of hydrogen from the less substituted carbon. It is this formation of the two different enols that accounts for the two different regiochemistries of halogenation. It's the enol itself, not the ketone, that undergoes reaction with the halogen. I've rewritten the reversible formation of the two enols. Once an enol is formed, it reacts rapidly with halogen. The same kind of air pushing mechanism we saw for alkenes. In fact, enols are very reactive alkenes. This places a positive charge on carbon that is resonance stabilized. And this is just a quick proton loss away from the halogenated ketone. The other enol reacts in the very same way. Very fast halogenation, formation of a resonance stabilized intermediate, and proton loss. This enol formation is faster, so more of this enol is formed. It's faster because it's more stable and more easily formed. Remember, more highly substituted double bonds are more stable than less highly substituted double bonds. And it's the relative rates of formation of these two enols which determines the product ratio of the alpha halogenation on one side or the other. So the bottom line is acid catalyzed alpha halogenation is regioselective. It has a significant preference for the more substituted carbon. Let's look at base catalyzed alpha halogenation. The regiochemical preference is just the opposite in base. The more substituted alpha position is the minor product. Let's look at the mechanism to understand it. In base, either of these alpha hydrogens can be lost. Losing the one shown in blue makes the more highly substituted enolate. This enolate has two resonance structures, and so does the other one. Base removes the proton, puts the negative charge on carbon, which is stabilized by resonance, as we show with arrow pushing. These enolates react very fast with halogen because they have a negative charge. Again, this is the minor product. This is the major product. This is the relative rates of removal of those protons that determines the ratio. In this case, removal of this proton is slower because the proton is less accessible. There's more steric hindrance from the methyl group and it's easier to get to this less hindered proton, so it's removed faster. And the take home message here is, under base catalyzed conditions, again, the halogenation is regioselective, but in the opposite manner, it's the less substituted carbon that is preferentially substituted. But wait, under basic conditions, there's another twist. Take a look. Although the product I showed you is initially formed, during the base-catalyzed halogenation of 2-butanone. 
is not the final product. When we isolate product, we get a surprising result. We get a carboxylic acid salt plus another product called chloroform. We can understand the formation of this carboxylate salt that has one less carbon than we started with. That methyl group has been completely removed by looking at a sequential halogenation of the ketone. Initial halogenation preferentially makes this chloromethyl ketone because halogen is electron withdrawing. Once we put a halogen on that alpha carbon, that alpha hydrogen is more acidic than before. So initially, halogenation occurred by removal of an alpha hydrogen. And now we have an alpha hydrogen in the product that's even more acidic because chlorine is electron withdrawing. So a second halogenation occurs that is faster than the first. Now we have two chlorines attached, but we still have an alpha hydrogen. It's even more acidic. So even faster, we'll replace the third hydrogen. Now this reaction only occurs for methyl ketones. By the time we put three halogens on attached to that carbon, actually that group becomes a good leaving group and this product undergoes nucleophilic acyl substitution. It acts like a carboxylic acid derivative. And typical for a nucleophilic acyl substitution, once we've added a nucleophile, we lose the leaving group. So we make the carboxylic acid and this anion. This rapidly acquires a proton to form chloroform, and this rapidly loses a proton to form the salt. This is the haloform reaction. It's typical only of methyl ketones. Other ketones don't put enough halogens on the carbon to make it a good leaving group. And there's one final twist. When the halogen is iodine, we make iodoform. An iodoform is a yellow solid. So for a very long time, the iodoform test has been a test for methyl ketones. Alpha halogenation is a synthetically useful reaction. The choice of catalyst lets you substitute preferentially at the more substituted carbon using acid or the less substituted carbon using base.